Hello and welcome to this video where we're going to be talking about direct proportion. When two variables are in direct proportion, this means that as one of them goes up by a set amount, the other also goes up by a set amount. Those set amounts do not need to be the same, but as one goes up, the other goes up, and that those set amounts are constant. Let me give you an example. The number of cats I have, I'm going to say is directly proportional to the number of legs I have. So if I have one cat, then there are four legs. What if I have three cats, then there are 12 legs. And let's say I have 12 cats, then there would be 48 legs altogether. So you should notice that cats times four gives you legs. And every single time I add another cat, so I could have 13 cats, let's take another one, I always add on four legs, so 52 legs. So every time I add one cat, I always add four legs. Every time I add four legs, I always add one cat. Now this of course assumes that all cats have four legs. Now this could be written more neatly as a formula, which is L equals 4C. So the number of legs I have equals four times the number of cats I have. And if you can write a formula like this, a very simple one, then these two variables, L and C, are said to be in direct proportion. And this number four here is said to be called the constant, and constant because it stays the same, of proportionality. Let's have a look at how this might be in an example. So here we have example one. P is directly proportional to Q. This means that as P goes up by a set amount, Q will always go up by a set amount. And we're told that when P is 40, Q is 5, and part A says to write down a formula linking P and Q. Now in this one, it may be relatively obvious what we need to do, um, because Q times by 8 would give us P because 5 times 8 is 40. But we're going to need to w worry about exactly how we write this down to gain marks in an exam. So what an examiner would expect you to do is when you see directly proportional to, you would write P equals, now we don't know what that number is going to be. In the previous one, for cats, the constant of proportionality was 4. We don't know what that's going to be. I mean, we do. We just discussed it. But when we, when we read the question initially, we don't. So we write k. We always put the letter k for the constant of proportionality and then q. So this is another way of writing p is directly proportional to, that's where the equals k comes in, q. Then what we do is we take our two values in the question and substitute those in. So p equals 40, so I change p for a 40, and q equals 5, so I change q for a 5. So I have 40 equals k times 5, in which case k must equal 40 divided by 5, so k equals 8. Now we've found what k equals 8 is properly using algebra. We can write the answer to our question, so p equals 8q. So we have written down a formula that shows you that p and q are directly linked together and that's by 8 here, the constant of proportionality. Part B then. Find the value of P when Q equals 10. So what I would always do here is write out my formula at the start of every question. Now that I know that P equals 8Q, I'm going to write that down. Then substitute in any information you're given. So I'm given Q is 10. So I don't know P, I know 8, but I know Q is 10. In which case, P is 8 times 10, which is 80. It's that simple. And for part C, find the value of Q when P is 168. So again, write out the formula that you now know and substitute in the values in the question. So I'm told P this time, not Q. I'm told P is 168, and that's equal to 8Q. So I'm finding Q. What I would do here is divide both sides by 8. So I get 168 divided by 8, in which case Q would equal 21. So this is a perfect example of how you would tackle a question on direct proportion. You're often asked to find a formula first, so you start with the two variables linked with k, always use the letter k for the constant of proportionality. You find out k and then write down your formula. 
Then you use your formula in both of the later parts of this question to find out missing values. Here's a practice question for you to try. Press pause here, have a go at this question for yourselves, and then press play and I'll tell you what the answers were. Okay, here are the answers then. So for part A, we need to write down y this time equals kx, keeping k as our constant of proportionality. We know what y is, 36, and we don't know k, but we know x is 9. So k must equal 36 divided by 9, k must equal 4. In which case, go back to our original formula here, y equals 4x. So that's the answer to part A. Part B then says find the value of y when x equals 2. So write out your formula, y equals 4x. Substitute in the values you know. I know x is 2, so y equals 4 times 2. So y equals 8. Part C, write out the formula again, y equals 4x. This time I'm told y is 4,000, so 4,000 equals 4x, in which case x would equal 4,000, divide 4, x would equal 1,000. So these are your answers. Here's a second example with a slightly more difficult question. It says t is directly proportional to the square of m. Now the square of m isn't m, it means m squared. It's another way of saying m squared, the square of m. And the rest of the question looks fairly similar to the one previously. So, part a, write a formula linking t and m. So I'm going to write t equals k, but then this time rather than writing m, I'm just going to write m squared the square of m. This is the only change to this question. So now I do exactly what I did before, substitute in the values I know. t is 36, so 36 equals k times 3, but this time I must remember the squared. All right. A very common mistake here would be to just use 3 and rather than 3 squared, which we know is 9. So k would equal 36 divided by 9, k would equal 4. So go back to your original formula now, t equals 4, because I know k, m squared. So this is my formula linking t and m, t equals 4m squared. Part b, you write out the formula, t equals 4m squared. I'm told m is 7, so I'm going to substitute that in, 4 times 7 squared. So t equals 4 times, well, 7 squared is 49. So t is 4 lots of 49, which would be 198. Making sure that you obey the laws of bid mass here, you have to do 7 squared before you multiply by 4. Part C on this question, once again, write out the formula, t equals 4m squared. This time t equals 100, so I replace my t with 100, equals 4m squared. So to get m here, what we need to do is we've got a times 4, so we'll need to divide 4, because that's the inverse operation, and we've got an m squared, so we'll need to square root. The order which you do these in, though, is important. So the first thing to do is divide by 4 on both sides. Divide 4 on the left, 100 divide 4, 25, and then 4m divide 4 is m squared. So I have m squared equals 25, in which case m equals plus or minus the square root of 25, so m equals plus or minus 5. That completes this second harder example. Here's a third example then. So c is directly proportional to no longer the square, but the square root of r. So a slightly different formula once again. So I have c equals k, I don't know what k is, but rather than r squared, I have square root r. This is probably the hardest type question you can get on direct proportion. So I substitute in my values. I have 18 and 81. So c is 18 equals k times square root 81. 18 equals k times, well, square root 81 is 9. So k equals 18 over 9. k equals 2. So my formula is c equals, now I know that k is 2, 
square root r. So part b, as always, write out your formula, substitute in what you're told, so r is 121, so c equals 2 times square root 121, c equals 2 times square root 121 is 11, so c equals 22. And finally, part c, write out your formula, c equals 2 square root r, c is 128, so I change my c for 128, and keep the rest the same. Now I need to divide 128 by 2, which is 64, equals square root r, and this bit's the slightly tricky bit of this question. To get rid of a square root, you square both sides, and you might be tempted because you see the number here, 64, to think the answer is going to be 8, but it's not. 64 squared is what r equals, so you square both sides, in which case r equals 4096. Okay, here are two final practice questions for you to have a go at. Press pause and try these for yourselves, and then press play and I'll tell you what the answers were. Okay, here are the answers then. So for part A on this one, we have P equals KQ squared. So 160 equals K times 4 squared. So 160 equals K times 16. K equals 160 over 16. K equals 10. In which case, the formula is P equals 10Q squared. For part B, we write our formula, P equals 10Q squared. Substitute in the Q as 7, so 10 times 7 squared, so P equals 10 times 49, so P equals 490. For this next one, we have A and B, so A equals, and it says cube root, so be very careful, K cube root of B. We're told that A is 10 and B is 8. So 10 equals K times, well the cube root of 8 you should know is 2 because 2 cubed is 8. So K equals 10 over 2, K equals 5, in which case the formula would be A equals 5 times the cube root of 8. For part B, I'm going to write out my formula, so I have A equals 5 times cube root b. I'm told that a is 15, so 15 equals 5 times cube root b. And then divide both sides by 5, so 15 divided by 5 is 3, so 3 equals cube root b. And then finally, b would be 3 cubed, so to get rid of a cube root, you cube it, which gives you b, and therefore b equals 27. That concludes this video on direct proportion.